What's up, lunatics? Welcome back to the channel. We're out in the bait laboratory today, and I got a new mold for you guys. And it's one of the molds that I would probably suggest you guys get first if you're gonna start making some of your own lead-based tackle. And what I'm talking about is just a round ball head jig. Round ball head jigs can be used for so many different things. Sometimes you want them weedless, sometimes you don't. In today's video, we are doing a jig that is not weedless, so it does not have a weed guard. But if you're really wanting to buy one mold, you could modify it to put a weed guard in there. But obviously, I have some other molds that do have weed guards in them, so I don't need to do that on this one. But this round ball head jig could be used for swim baits, for creature baits, for all kinds of different techniques. You could put a skirt on this and have your own finesse jig it, without a weed guard on it so you don't have the, the worries of maybe not hooking a fish as good as you could because the weed guard didn't, didn't fold down enough or something like that. So definitely a great mold to have. It's one that I'm glad that I am adding to my lineup of molds. So let's get into the video. Let's show you some of the components that we're gonna be using today and then we'll get into making this thing. So what we got right here is the round head jig mold from Dual Molds. You got a bunch of different sizes in there that you can use. You got 1 32nd, 1 16th, 1 8th, a quarter, 3 8 half, and 5 8 So you can make a ton of different sizes with this mold. And here we have all the different size Gamagatsu hooks that are made for this mold. So we're gonna get this thing going. We're gonna open up some of those packs and we're gonna make up some of these jigs. So before we get going and making these baits, I wanted to show you guys the inside of this mold. As you can see, we got a lot of different sizes in there. And basically we can use number two hooks all the way up to a four out hook, depending on what size round head jig we're gonna make. So let's get our lead going and get these jigs made. And as always, we got our Lee lead pot. The lead is already all melted, so we're good to go. Um, one thing I like to do, and I'll show you guys right here, is I like to put a nail in the bottom of the spout because it helps keep it from dripping and it also keeps the spout open so you get a good flow coming out of there. It's kind of a pain sometimes because you gotta take it in and out um, each time you wanna pour, but I found that this is very helpful when the pot starts to leak. Okay, so we're ready to start putting our hooks inside of our mold. So what we're gonna do in this pour is an eight ounce and this is a two watt Gamagatsu 604 hook. And then we got a three watt Gamagatsu 604 hook as well for our quarter ounce size. So as you can see, we got one watt size bigger depending on what weight size we're gonna go. But I can see myself using that eight ounce and quarter ounce pretty often. Okay, so we're gonna close up this mold. Just be careful so your hooks don't move. We're gonna make sure we got a flush top right here, which we do. We're gonna come over to the lead pot. Let me adjust the camera position a little bit. There we go. And I'm gonna take these pliers, pull out the nail I got in there, make sure we got good float, which we do. And I can't remember which hole it is, so we're gonna pour a few different ones just to make sure I got it in all of them. That'll cover it. And then we're gonna check these out in a second. All right, so our jig should be ready to go. We're gonna open up the mold and check them out. So as you can see, we got a few more in there than we needed, but I couldn't remember what position those two jigs with the hooks were in. So I just decided to pour extra um, holes because you can just throw that extra lead and that doesn't have the hooks on them, just throw it right back in the pot. So no harm, no foul. Okay, so there's a better look at that jig right there. We're gonna cut the sprue off which is that part right there. We're gonna cut that off here in a second, but I wanted to give you guys a good look at that jig as it came out of the mold. All right, so I'm gonna make a couple more of these. If you hear a fan or some kind of a wind noise going on while I'm doing this, it's because I got a fan blowing because it's really hot in my garage right now. And I need that so I don't sweat all over everything. So we're gonna go into the eighth ounce jig. That's the two watt hook right there. And then we're gonna come over to here and get our three watt hook. And then we're going to put it in the eighth ounce jig right there. We're gonna close this up and come over to our lead pot and put these in just like so. And that should be good. Cover it up. And then we'll check these out. 
All right, so we're ready to open up and check out our jigs. And once again, I poured extras because I can't seem to remember that it's the third and the fourth. So we got a couple extra, um, some extra lead in there that we don't really need, but let's get these out of the mold and uh, show you that right there. They turned out really, really good. We're gonna get a couple more of these made up and then we'll paint them. Okay, so the last run of these, and then we'll get to painting them. And I'm gonna do another eight ounce size. And then I'm gonna do another quarter ounce size, just like that. And then we're gonna close up our mold. And we're gonna head over to the lead pot and pull the nail out. And the third and the fourth, which is all I needed this time. And then we'll plug up our hole and then check out our jigs. Okay, so let's open up our mold for the last time and check out the two jigs that I made up. And once again, they turned out really good. This mold pours really, really well. And uh, it's a good close up look at them. And we're gonna cut these sprues off and get them ready to go and then we'll paint them up. Okay, so off camera, I already cut off the sprues. What I like to use is these shears right here to cut off the sprues. What you can also do is just wiggle them back and forth and they'll come off, but I just like to use these shears. Um, I feel like it makes it pretty easy, but it does leave this little top part. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this file right here and I'm just gonna file that down to smooth everything out. And you wanna make sure you keep this round because if you go too much in the same direction, it's gonna flatten everything out. But when you go move it around and everything, you keep the, the shape of the head here, just like so. So that one is good to go. So we'll set it aside. And then we're gonna do it again on this little eight ounce one. And I got a little bit of flashing, if you can see it in the video, but I'll show you what I do to clean that up. Just because you get a little flashing does not mean that your jig is messed up. If you wanna clean it up a little bit yourself, all you gotta do is just take this file and just slowly and gently file down that flashing and everything will turn out just how you want. It'll look good. It'll have a you know finished professional look to it, just like you're going for. So get that a little bit better. And just like that, it looks good. So I'm gonna keep going and file these down and while i do that i just want to talk about some different baits that you can use on these jigs and something that i know will work really good is some smaller creature style baits some of your smaller um or mid-sized beaver style baits will work really well i think these ball head jigs um can do really good when you have like half of a stick worm on there because these aren't gonna give you the same effect as a Ned Rig. Um, these jigs are gonna lay flat on the bottom, so the salt that's in that stick worm um, is gonna help it stay down on the bottom, and you'll be able to just drag that thing along the bottom. So when you get a real finesse bite going, you can put you know two, three inch piece of plastic on the back of this bait and uh, probably do some damage and catch some of those fish that otherwise wouldn't bite. Okay, so we have our jigs ready to go. They're all nice and smoothed out. No more imperfections left from the sprues. No more imperfections left from the flashing that occurred. And these things are ready to go and they're ready to get painted. All right, so it's time to paint. We got our fluid bed set up right here. We got our jigs just hanging out, getting ready to get painted. And we have the heat gun right here because you need a heat source to heat up that lead in order for that powder paint to melt. And a fluid bed, guys, is super simple to make yourself. This is a um, aquarium filter that you could just you can literally just get it at Walmart. This is some um, tubing, clear tubing. These valves right here you can buy at Home Depot, and it just help you adjust the how much air flows going in here. And this is just basic. PVC pipe that you can put together. Um, I'll probably do a video here soon to show you guys how to make one yourself because I've gotten a lot of questions on it, but it's super simple. Once I went, if I do the video, you're gonna you're gonna have a hard time believing that it's that simple to do. So in a second, I'm gonna turn this heat gun on, and all we're gonna do is heat up this jig. You just hold it over the heat, and then you just literally dip it in the cup and bang off the extra and it's ready to go. It's that simple. All right, so I'm turning on the heat gun 
And since the heat gun was cold ahead of time, I'm gonna leave this on longer than I normally would. But we're just gonna let this get nice and hot. Give it probably like a 10, 15 count, especially since it was, was cold when we started. And then we're gonna just go over to the fluid bed, dip this in there just like so, get the extra off. And there you have it. We got a jig ready to go. So the last one we did was one of the eight ounce. So this is the quarter ounce. And as you go up higher in weight, you'll have to leave these on the heat a little bit longer. It's not a ton longer when you go from an eighth to a quarter, but you do need to leave it on just a little bit more because you have more lead you gotta heat up to melt that powder paint. So we're gonna go over to our fluid bed, dip this guy in, get that extra off. And there we got another good looking jig. Okay, so I'm gonna go through now and just get these going myself i already showed you guys that process so we'll go through this one more time and i'll do the last couple off off camera and just dip that guy in there and if you do that where you don't get the whole thing covered it's not a big deal because you're going to end up putting a plastic on on this in most cases anyway so i'm going to leave that as it is and go on to the next one so one thing i like to do when i'm done painting my jigs or my ned rigs or whatever it is for that matter I like to hang them up on this dowel or, or up on that wire that I have strung up here because it lets them cool down and then I can pick them up easily, clean out those eyes that we're like we're gonna do here in a second and um, it's off the table and they can just dry up and uh, nothing's gonna mess up that paint job that I just, just put on there. Okay, so if you guys have been watching my content for a while, you're gonna know this process already. But basically what we got right here is this hook eye is plugged up with powder paint. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this eye buster tool. You can get it at the Do It Molds website, super cheap. We're gonna stick the eye in there and just push down. And basically all we're doing is busting that powder paint out of the eye of the hook. And then what I like to do is just take a, uh, a hook that you have lying around and I'll just stick it right back through that eye just to make sure it's all nice and clean. And then just like that, you got an eye that you can put the line through. No problems at all. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna continue to do this on all the different um, jigs here because I want to make sure that I don't have any issues when I go to fish these that they all have eyes that are nice and open that I can put my line through and it doesn't take much for these ones to get plugged up the eye the hook on on these hooks is is small so it doesn't take a whole lot of paint to um, plug up those eyes so it's gonna probably be something you need to do uh, most of the time on on these on the Ned rigs that I make as well you got to clean out those eyes on pretty much all of the pores. I'm sure there's ways that you can do it to where you can you can tape up the eye ahead of time before you paint it, but I don't like to do that because I want paint to get all the way down to the base of that hook eye. And uh, I don't feel like the time is worth going through and taping everything. I feel like it's quicker to just use this eye buster tool and get those eyes nice and clean uh, myself after they're done being painted. So we had six jigs and uh, there you have it, they're all done now. All right, so we're at the last step of the process when making these jigs and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these jigs and we're gonna put them into the toaster oven to bake that powder paint on to these jigs. Once you bake that powder paint onto these jigs, it makes the paint much more durable and it's gonna be much more resistant when you're fishing from, from breaking off or, or cracking or, or what have you. So. You definitely want to bake these if you have the ability to do so. Um, you you can fish it without baking them, but it's going to make that paint job a lot more durable when you do put them in to bake. And what we're going to do is we're going to close this up, and we're going to set the timer for 20 minutes, and we are going to be doing it at about four, 375 or so, maybe 400. So while those things are baking in the oven, I wanted to go through and talk about some different baits that you can use with these round ball head jigs and something like a soft plastic swim bait um, these six cents divine swim baits would be a great option um, you could also use something like the six cents stroker crop another thing that you can use is the six cents prawn that would be a great bait to put on there um, you could also cut down the six cents clout their stick bait and uh, put it on there as well and then you could also use your typical you know texas rig style worm like the divine shaky worm that would be a great option as well and i'm just showing you the six cents ones because i don't have any um of my own 
plastics ready to go to show you guys. So I figured I'd just give you some of these examples while those those jigs are baking and just give you some examples on some ideas that I have um, and what I'm gonna use when I fish these. I will make up some of my own swim baits and stuff like that and all my and some of my other plastics to use, but I figured I'd show you some of these on the wall. Okay, so we got our jigs all baked and ready to go. Let me get these out and I'll show you a better look. Okay, so there you have it. You got three quarter ounce round head ball jigs and then we got three of the one eighth ounce. We have two odd hooks in those eighth ounce and three odd hooks in the quarter ounce jigs. These things are legit. They got good hooks in them, super sharp hooks. And I know that you can catch a ton of fish on these. Well, everybody, thanks for tuning in to today's episode. I really hope you enjoyed learning how to make those ball head jigs right there. They're super versatile baits. You can put them as swim bait jig heads. You can use them for creature bait jig heads. You can use them in a bunch of different situations. You could make those into hair jigs. You could make little tiny ones that are like crappie jigs. There's so many different things that you can do with those jigs. Um, it, it, I'm just giving you a few of the ideas. Your, your imagination can um, probably take you to a whole bunch of different places and give you a bunch of different ideas on how to fish these different combinations you can use to pair up, different plastics you can use, different feathers that you can use. There's tons of different things that you can do. I'm looking forward to using these uh, when I go out to uh, fish for some smallmouth, just drag some really small plastics along the bottom and those smallmouth will probably for sure, for sure eat those things. Uh, maybe you rig up some, some that are just plain lead color and put them with a, you know, swim bait, something like that and just really slow roll it on the bottom. I think that those fish will definitely eat that. You could use something like a hula grub and fish it similar to a finesse jig, something like that. But super great bait right there. Probably... Definitely need to get some for yourself and all the details are going to be down in the description. So all the links to the different stuff that I used in today's video are going to be down in the description. So if you're new to the channel, please give me a subscribe. I hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and um, leave a comment with any questions or anything else you would like to see me make here on the channel. So again, thanks for tuning into today's episode. I really appreciate it. Thank you and I'll see you guys next time. Later.